Crab boat working the North Sea robustly designed contemporary fishing boat A fishing vessel is a boat or ship used to catch fish in the sea, or on a lake or river. Many different kinds of vessels are used in commercial, artisanal and recreational fishing. The total number of fishing vessels in the world in 2016 was estimated to be about 4.6 million, unchanged from 2014. The fleet in Asia was the largest, consisting of 3.5 million vessels, accounting for 75% of the global fleet. In Africa and North America the estimated number of vessels declined from 2014 by just over 30,000 and by nearly 5,000, respectively. For Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean and Oceania the numbers all increased, largely as a result of improvements in estimation procedures. It is difficult to estimate the number of recreational fishing boats. They range in size from small dinghies to large charter cruisers, and unlike commercial fishing vessels, are often not dedicated just to fishing. Prior to the 1950s there was little standardization of fishing boats. Designs could vary between ports and boatyards. Traditionally boats were built of wood, but wood is not often used now because of higher maintenance costs and lower durability. Fiberglass is used increasingly in smaller fishing vessels up to 25 meters, while steel is usually used on vessels above 25 meters. Viking boats showing clinker planking. Early fishing vessels included rafts, dugout canoes, and boats constructed from a frame covered with hide or tree bark, along the lines of a coracle. The oldest boats found by archaeological excavation are dugout canoes dating back to the Neolithic period around 7,000 to 9,000 years ago. These canoes were often cut from coniferous tree logs, using simple stone tools. A 7,000-year-old seagoing boat made from reeds and tar has been found in Kuwait. These early vessels had limited capability, they could float and move on water, but were not suitable for use any great distance from the shoreline. They were used mainly for fishing and hunting. The development of fishing boats took place in parallel with the development of boats for trade and war. Early navigators began to use animal skins or woven fabrics for sails. Affixed to a pole set upright in the boat, these sails gave early boats more range, allowing voyages of exploration. Around 4000 BC, Egyptians were building long narrow boats powered by many oarsmen. Over the next 1000 years, they made a series of remarkable advances in boat design. They developed cotton-made sails to help their boats go faster with less work. Then they built boats large enough to cross the oceans. These boats had sails and oarsmen, and were used for travel and trade. By 3000 BC, the Egyptians knew how to assemble planks of wood into a ship hull. They used woven straps to lash planks together, and reeds or grass stuffed between the planks to seal the seams. An example of their skill is the Khufu ship, a vessel 143 feet in length entombed at the foot of the Great Pyramid of Giza around 2500 BC and found intact in 1954. At about the same time, the Scandinavians were also building innovative boats. People living near Kongslingby in Denmark, came up with the idea of segregated hull compartments, which allowed the size of boats to gradually be increased. A crew of some two dozen paddled the wooden Hjortspring boat across the Baltic Sea long before the rise of the Roman Empire. Scandinavians continued to develop better ships, incorporating iron and other metal into the design and developing oars for propulsion. By 1000 AD the Norsemen were preeminent on the oceans. They were skilled seamen and boat builders, with clinker-built boat designs that varied according to the type of boat. Trading boats, such as the Nairs, were wide to allow large cargo storage. Raiding boats, such as the Longship, were long and narrow and very fast. The vessels they used for fishing were scaled-down versions of their cargo boats. The Scandinavian innovations influenced fishing boat design long after the Viking period came to an end. For example, yules from the Orkney island of Stroma were built in the same way as the Norse boats. Herring bus taking aboard its drift net. In the 15th century, the Dutch developed a type of seagoing herring drifter that became a blueprint for European fishing boats. This was the herring bus, used by Dutch herring fishermen until the early 19th centuries. The ship type bus has a long history. It was known around 1000 AD in Scandinavia as a buza, a robust variant of the Viking longship. The first herring bus was probably built in Horn around 1415. The ship was about 20 meters long and displaced between 60 and 100 tons. It was a massive round bilged keel ship with a bluff bow and stern, the latter relatively high, and with a gallery. The buses used long drifting gill nets to catch the herring. The nets would be retrieved at night and the crews of 18 to 30 men would set to giving, salting and barreling the catch on the broad deck. 
A dogger viewed from before the port beam. C. 1675 by Willem van de Velde the Younger. During the 17th century, the British developed the dogger, an early type of sailing trawler or longliner, which commonly operated in the North Sea. Doggers were slow but sturdy, capable of fishing in the rough conditions of the North Sea. Like the herring bus, they were wide beamed and bluff bowed, but considerably smaller, about 15 meters long, a maximum beam of 4. 5 meters, a draft of 1. 5 meters, and displacing about 13 tons. They could carry a ton of bait, 3 tons of salt, half a ton each of food and firewood for the crew, and return with 6 tons of fish. Decked areas forward and aft probably provided accommodation, storage and a cooking area. An anchor would have allowed extended periods fishing in the same spot, in waters up to 18 meters deep. The dogger would also have carried a small open boat for maintaining lines and rowing ashore. A precursor to the dory type was the early French bateau type, a flat bottom boat with straight sides used as early as 1671 on the St. Lawrence River. The common coastal boat of the time was the wherry and the merging of the wherry design with the simplified flat bottom of the bateau resulted in the birth of the dory. England, France, Italy, and Belgium have small boats from medieval periods that could reasonably be construed as predecessors of the dory. Dories appeared in New England fishing towns sometime after the early 18th century. They were small, shallow draft boats, usually about 5 to 7 meters long. Lightweight and versatile, with high sides, a flat bottom and sharp bows, they were easy and cheap to build. The bank dories appeared in the 1830s. They were designed to be carried on mother ships and used for fishing cod at the Grand Banks. Adapted almost directly from the low freeboard, French river bateaux, with their straight sides and removable forts, bank dories could be nested inside each other and stored on the decks of fishing schooners. Such as the Gazella Primero, for their trip to the Grand Banks fishing grounds. A Brixham trawler by William Adolphus Now, The painting is now in the National Maritime Museum. The British Dogger was an early type of sailing trawler from the 17th century, but the modern fishing trawler was developed in the 19th century, at the English fishing port of Brixham. By the early 19th century, the fishermen at Brixham needed to expand their fishing area further than ever before due to the ongoing depletion of stocks that was occurring in the overfished waters of South Devon. The Brixham trawler that evolved there was of a sleek build and had a tall gaff rig, which gave the vessel sufficient speed to make long-distance trips out to the fishing grounds in the ocean. They were also sufficiently robust to be able to tow large trawls in deep water. The great trawling fleet that built up at Brixham, earned the village the title of mother of deep-sea fisheries. This revolutionary design made large-scale trawling in the ocean possible for the first time, resulting in a massive migration of fishermen from the ports in the south of England. To villages further north, such as Scarborough, Hull, Grimsby, Harwich, and Yarmouth, that were points of access to the large fishing grounds in the Atlantic Ocean. The small village of Grimsby grew to become the largest fishing port in the world by the mid-19th century. With the tremendous expansion in the fishing industry, the Grimsby Dock Company was formed in 1846. The dock covered 25 acres and was formally opened by Queen Victoria in 1854 as the first modern fishing port. The facilities incorporated many innovations of the time, the dock gates and cranes were operated by hydraulic power, and the 300-foot Grimsby Dock Tower was built to provide a head of water with sufficient pressure by William Armstrong. The elegant Brixham trawler spread across the world, influencing fishing fleets everywhere. Their distinctive sails inspired the song Red Sails in the Sunset, written aboard a Brixham sailing trawler called the Torbay Lass. By the end of the 19th century, there were over 3,000 fishing trawlers in commission in Britain, with almost 1,000 at Grimsby. These trawlers were sold to fishermen around Europe, including from the Netherlands and Scandinavia. Twelve trawlers went on to form the nucleus of the German fishing fleet. Although fishing vessel designed increasingly began to converge around the world, local conditions still often led the development of different types of fishing boats. The Lancashire Nobby was used down the northwest coast of England as a shrimp trawler from 1840 until World War II. The Manx Nobby was used around the Isle of Man as a herring drifter. The Fifi was also used as a herring drifter along the east coast of Scotland from the 1850s until well into the 20th century. Advent of steam power The earliest steam-powered fishing boats first appeared in the 1870s and used the trawl system of fishing as well as lines and drift nets. These were large boats, usually 80 to 90 feet in length with a beam of around 20 feet. They weighed 40 to 50 tons and traveled at 9 to 11 knots. 
The earliest purpose-built fishing vessels were designed and made by David Allen in Leith in March 1875, when he converted a drifter to steam power. In 1877, he built the first screw-propelled steam trawler in the world. This vessel was Pioneer LH 854. She was of wooden construction with two masts and carried a gaff-rigged main and mizzen using booms, and a single foresail. Pioneer is mentioned in the Shetland Times of May 4, 1877. In 1878 he completed forward and onward, steam-powered trawlers for sale. Allen built a total of 10 boats at Leith between 1877 and 1881. 21 boats were completed at Granton, his last vessel being de Gravy in 1886. Most of these were sold to foreign owners in France, Belgium, Spain and the West Indies. Seine Net Trawler, opened 1958. The first steam boats were made of wood, but steel hulls were soon introduced and were divided into watertight compartments. They were well designed for the crew with a large building that contained the wheelhouse and the deckhouse. The boats built in the 20th century only had a mizzen sail, which was used to help steady the boat when its nets were out. The main function of the mast was now as a crane for lifting the catch ashore. They also had a steam capstan on the foredeck near the mast for hauling nets. The boats had narrow, high funnels so that the steam and thick coal smoke was released high above the deck and away from the fishermen. These funnels were nicknamed woodbines because they looked like the popular brand of cigarette. These boats had a crew of 12 made up of a skipper, driver, fireman and nine deck hands. Steam fishing boats had many advantages. They were usually about 20 feet longer than the sailing vessels so they could carry more nets and catch more fish. This was important, as the market was growing quickly at the beginning of the 20th century. They could travel faster and further and with greater freedom from weather, wind and tide. Because less time was spent traveling to and from the fishing grounds, more time could be spent fishing. The steamboats also gained the highest prices for their fish, as they could return quickly to harbor with their fresh catch. The main disadvantage of the steamboats, though, was their high operating costs. Their engines were mechanically inefficient and took up much space, while fuel and fitting out costs were very high. Before the First World War, building costs were between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds, at least three times the cost of the sailboats. To cover these high costs, they needed to fish for longer seasons. The higher expenses meant that more steam drifters were company-owned or jointly owned. As the herring fishing industry declined, steam boats became too expensive. Steam trawlers were introduced at Grimsby and Hull in the 1880s. In 1890 it was estimated that there were 20,000 men on the North Sea. The steam drifter was not used in the herring fishery until 1897. The last sailing fishing trawler was built in 1925 in Grimsby. Further development armed trawler nums Honingsvog off Iceland. Trawler designs adapted as the way they were powered changed from sail to coal-fired steam by World War I to diesel and turbines by the end of World War II. The first trawlers fished over the side, rather than over the stern. In 1947, the company Christian Salvesen, based in Leith, Scotland, refitted a surplus Algerine-class minesweeper with refrigeration equipment and a factory ship stern ramp, to produce the first combined freezer-slash-stern trawler in 1947. The first purpose-built stern trawler was Fairtree built in 1953 at Aberdeen. The ship was much larger than any other trawlers then in operation and inaugurated the era of the super trawler. As the ship pulled its nets over the stern, it could lift out a much greater haul of up to 60 tons. Lord Nelson followed in 1961, installed with vertical plate freezers that had been researched and built at the Tory Research Station. These ships served as a basis for the expansion of super trawlers around the world in the following decades. In recent decades, commercial fishing vessels have been increasingly equipped with electronic aids, such as radio navigation aids and fish finders. During the Cold War, some countries fitted fishing trawlers with additional electronic gear so they could be used as spy ships to monitor the activities of other countries. Globally, the number of engine-powered vessels was estimated to be 2.8 million in 2016. This represents 61% of all fishing vessels, down from 64% in 2014, as the number of non-motorized vessels increased, probably because of improved estimations. In 2016, about 86% of the motorized fishing vessels in the world were in the length overall class of less than 12 meters, the vast majority of which were undecked, and those small vessels dominated in all regions. Conversely, the largest vessels, classified as those with loa greater than 24 meters made up about 2% of the total fleet. About 1.3 million of these are decked vessels with enclosed areas. Nearly all of these decked vessels are mechanized, and 40,000 of them are over 100 tons. At the other extreme, 
Two-thirds of the undecked boats are traditional craft of various types, powered only by sail and oars. These boats are used by artisan fishers. The German factory ship Kiel NC-105 The 200-mile fishing limit has changed fishing patterns and, in recent times, fishing boats are becoming more specialized and standardized. In the United States and Canada more use is made of large factory trawlers, while the huge blue water fleets operated by Japan and the Soviet bloc countries have contracted. In Western Europe, fishing vessel design is focused on compact boats with high catching power. Commercial fishing is a high-risk industry, and countries are introducing regulations governing the construction and operation of fishing vessels. The International Maritime Organization, convened in 1959 by the United Nations, is responsible for devising measures aimed at the prevention of accidents, including standards for ship design, construction, equipment, operation and manning. According to the FAO, in 2004 the world's fishing fleet consisted of 4 million vessels. Of these, 1. 3 million were decked vessels with enclosed areas. The rest were open vessels, of which two-thirds were traditional craft propelled by sails and oars. By contrast, nearly all decked vessels were mechanized. Of the decked vessels, 86% are found in Asia, 7. 8% in Europe, 3. 8% in North and Central America, 1. 3% in Africa, 0. 6% in South America and 0. 4% in Oceania. Most commercial fishing boats are small, usually less than 30 meters but up to 100 meters for a large per sina or factory ship. Commercial fishing vessels can be classified by architecture, the type of fish they catch, the fishing method used, or geographical origin. The following classification follows the FAO, who classify commercial fishing vessels by the gear they use. A trawler is a fishing vessel designed to use trawl nets in order to catch large volumes of fish. A zina fishing for salmon off the coast of Raspberry Island, Alaska. Signers use surrounding and seine nets. This is a large group ranging from open boats as small as 10 meters in length to ocean-going vessels. There are also specialized gears that can target demersal species. Line vessels, Japanese squid jigger electric lamps on squid jigger lobster fishing boats fishing boat in a heavy sea The fisheries research vessel RV Celtic Explorer artisan fishing is small-scale commercial or subsistence fishing. Particularly practices involving coastal or island ethnic groups using traditional fishing techniques and traditional boats. This may also include heritage groups involved in customary fishing practices. According to the FAO, at the end of 2004, the world fishing fleet consisted of about 4 million vessels, of which 2. 7 million were undecked boats. While nearly all decked vessels were mechanized, only one third of the undecked fishing boats were powered, usually with outboard engines. The remaining one. 8 million boats were traditional craft of various types, operated by sail and oars. These figures for small fishing vessels are probably underreported. The FAO compiles these figures largely from national registers. These records often omit smaller boats where registration is not required or where fishing licenses are granted by provincial or municipal authorities. Artisan fishing boats are usually small traditional fishing boats, appropriately designed for use on their local inland waters or coasts. Many localities around the world have developed their own traditional types of fishing boats, adapted to use local materials suitable for boat building and to the specific requirements of the fisheries and sea conditions in their area. Artisan boats are often open. Many have sails, but they do not usually use much, or any mechanized or electronic gear. Large numbers of artisan fishing boats are still in use, particularly in developing countries with long productive marine coastlines. For example, Indonesia has reported about 700,000 fishing boats, 25% of which are dugout canoes, and half of which are without motors. The Philippines have reported a similar number of small fishing boats. Many of the boats in this area are double outrigger craft, consisting of a narrow main hull with two attached outriggers, commonly known as jukung in Indonesia and bangkit in the Philippines. Recreational fishing is done for pleasure or sport, and not for profit or survival. Just about anything that will stay afloat can be called a recreational fishing boat, so long as a fisher periodically climbs aboard with the intent to catch a fish. Usually some form of fishing tackle is brought on board, such as hooks, lines, sinkers or nets. Fish are caught for recreational purposes from boats which range from dugout canoes, kayaks, rafts, pontoon boats and small dinghies to runabouts, cabin cruisers and cruising yachts to large, high-tech and luxurious big-game rigs. Larger boats, purpose-built with recreational fishing in mind, usually have large, 
open cockpits at the stern designed for convenient fishing. Big game fishing started as a sport after the invention of the motorized boat. Charles Frederick Holder, a marine biologist and early conservationist, is credited with founding the sport in 1898. Purpose-built game fishing boats appeared shortly after. An example is the Crete, in use at Catalina Island, California, in 1915, and shipped to Hawaii the following year. According to a newspaper report at that time, the Crete had a deep cockpit, a chair fitted for landing big fish in leather pockets. For placing the pole, it is difficult to estimate how many recreational fishing boats there are, although the number is high. The term is fluid, since most recreational boats are also used for fishing from time to time. Unlike most commercial fishing vessels, recreational fishing boats are often not dedicated just to fishing. Standard aluminum base boat, with trolling motor this article incorporates text from a free content work. Licensed under CC by SA3. Zero ego license statement slash permission. Text taken from in brief, The State of World Fisheries and Aquaculture, 2018, FAO, FAO. Thanks for watching.